Hey guys, Retro Ralph here, welcome back. So in today's episode, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm always combing the internet for new and unique things and products and whatnot. And I saw something that was kind of cool. It's a seven inch LCD panel that has HDMI that's kind of built for Retro Pies or Raspberry Pies. We call them Retro Pies because that's what we use them for. But uh, I, was, I got to thinking, if it has a mount for a Retro Pie or Raspberry Pi on the back, you know, it could make a cool tabletop computer if you hook up a keyboard to it, but better yet, it'd make a really cool tabletop arcade. So let's deconstruct this thing. We'll dive into it, put it together and see, is it feasible to make a tabletop arcade out of, you know, this seven inch display? I'm kind of excited about this. So let's sit back, relax and go do it. <laughs> Alright guys, what we have here is a 7 inch LCD display, but it's really more than that. So let's open it up and see what we got. What my idea is here is I got an idea for a cool project that I think you guys will be into. So basically this is sort of a LCD picture frame based on a retro pie. And what I was thinking would be cool is what if we could turn this into a tabletop arcade system. I think we can. I think it'd be really cool if we did. So here's the display. Uh, it's a touch screen, really cool. I'm actually thinking there's a lot of really neat applications for this because this is actually a HDMI display. So we're gonna have to play with this in other applications later, but let's get this thing built and see, uh, see what we can do. All right, so let's start the build process. So the only thing I'll say here is that paper that's coming off those pieces of plastic, it's pretty difficult and it takes a while. So um, just have your patience and uh, take some time with that. The only other recommendation I would make is that it tells you to turn the retro pie in a certain direction. I would actually mount it the opposite direction and you'll find out later in the video. It will make cable management 10 times better and it will look a lot better. So we're about wrapping up the build and we'll be back to live action here in a second. Okay, so we're pretty much done building this beast. Um, not really excited about how the HDMI cable does that. I feel like there would probably be a better way to do that and maybe tuck that out of the way. So I don't see a power connector anywhere. I'm going to assume I can power the display off of the actual Raspberry Pi itself, which would be pretty cool if you can. Uh, there we go. Okay, some more cords. I, mean, I guess we can probably get some wire ties and make that look nice eventually. Okay, so I went and got a couple items to round this thing off. I got two speakers, cheap $10 speakers. Got the Raspberry Pi power supply, five volt. A joystick. Uh, one that is on the, um, I know it looks generic, but it's on the compatibility list for RetroPie. I don't know if you guys know that, but there is a RetroPie joystick compatibility list. It's actually a really good place to go if, uh, if you're having trouble or you want to know where you should go for joysticks that are guaranteed to work with RetroPie. Okay, so I guess we'll power this thing up. This is not exactly the elegant look I was going for, but... That's okay. Well, uh, there's always, this is round one. We haven't, this is actually prototype number one. So it kind of looks maybe a little cool with all that stuff hanging off of it. Right, I'm going to plug the joystick in to the USB port and I'm going to plug these speakers into both the headphone jack. I feel like this Retro Pi would have been better if it was mounted. I feel like they tell you to mount it this way, but if you mounted it upside down, you wouldn't see nearly any of the wires. So I'm thinking they might have messed up in the instructions. Because I don't know that you want to see all that. And if you have it back, if you have it upside down, which I don't see why you couldn't, you wouldn't have that problem. All right, so I've got my game pad. I got my speakers. All right. I guess we could try to fire this thing up. I, uh, admittedly, I already put a, a RetroPie image on this, so we'll see if it just boots up and works. All right, let's fire it up. Lots of wires, dude. Not exactly what I was thinking. 
I do think this was wrong. I think all this stuff goes underneath, in which case it would look a lot nicer. So I'm gonna have to remount the RetroPie. It just doesn't look right like that. All right, it's booting emulation station. I don't hear any sound from the speakers. Let's see if we can get these speakers working. Sometimes that's a common issue. If you use the three and a half or 3.5 millimeter jack, it doesn't, the audio doesn't come out of the speakers. It comes out of the HDMI connection, which, which is most of the time you want that. But in this case, we don't want that. So let's see. So we want headphone jack. Whoa. Sweet. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna play some, let's see. Let's see my Genesis stuff. I think, I think the speakers are kind of a fail here, but that's okay. Well, my favorite game is Streets of Rage, so let's do that. Ooh, this could be cool. I mean, the screen's not a bad size, really. Especially for the distance I'm playing at, I'm just not digging all the wires showing. I mean, because you can easily put this on a tabletop and play two players, so... I don't know, man. I think this could be a cool thing. I don't know. What do you guys think? My biggest beef of it is this. Like, I don't really like that that's all showing, so... I feel like if there was a way to get rid of that, I think I would be a little bit more into it. Okay, I'm just trying to flip this around because it, I did not like the way those wires were hanging out everywhere. I'm kind of digging this whole setup though. I just didn't like the way the wires were in the way. All right, let's see if that helps. So, um, you know, there's a lot of wires in this thing, but I think it'll look a little bit better having um, the HDMI from the bottom and not this craziness that it was before. It looks much nicer from the front. I still, still am not, not totally digging the wire footprint, but it's still, I think it's much, much, much better than it was. So let's, uh, I'll call that an upgrade. Let's turn this guy on again. All right, here's a closer look at this thing. So what do you guys think of this so far? I think it's kind of cool. This is actually really cool, guys. I don't know. I wouldn't have thought this is a cool way to play this, but I kind of like it. If you could put it on a tabletop or like on your desk at work or something, maybe not on your desk at work, but this is so cool. <laughs> and the screen actually looks really nice. I don't know if it comes through on the camera, but it's a really cool looking, it's a really nice looking screen. Um, I didn't mention this screen is also a touch screen as well. So if you loaded um, one of the many Raspberry Pi operating environments, you could uh, you could use the touchscreen, which is kind of cool. So this thing could be dual purpose, whether that whether you have multiple SD cards that you're going to put in it or whatever. So, all right, guys, that about wraps things up. You may notice that the screen got a bit bigger, and that's because I missed some configuration settings in the manual for the touchscreen. So make sure you see those and configure those for the boot doc config file, and that'll make sure the screen is set up adequately. So sorry about that, but uh, hopefully you guys liked this video. Please, I would love to hear your comments, so leave them in the comments section below. Please subscribe to the channel. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.